Keep yourself in the loop of everything football on the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. The latest news on and off the field, be it college football, Big Ten, SCC, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, to the NFL. We've got you covered. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. And welcome to the GSMC Football Podcast. This episode is brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. And as always, I am your host, Jesse Tapia. All right, it is Tuesday. Feels like I haven't done this show in years, honestly. Feels like I haven't done this show in weeks, to be more realistic. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because I do this one on Thursday and then back to two, like Tuesdays and Thursdays. So it's like a nice little little break from Thursday or Friday to Monday, whatever you want to call it or whatever. All right. But nonetheless, I'm here. We're here. We're listening together. All right. Yes, I do listen to my own podcast sometimes. So yes, we are listening. But nonetheless, let me tell you what's going on today for this fine Tuesday. All right. One thing, I mean, it's fine Tuesday, but it's way too hot outside, man. I can't stand the heat. I'd rather just be 70s all year long. All right. Why can't we do that? Why is it that one week over here, it goes from 70s and 80s, like 70s to low 80s to it's 90 degrees now? I don't get it. All right. I'm not a fan of it at all. But nonetheless, I guess that means with the weather changing, we are getting closer to football. All right. We got rookie minicamp starting up and all that. And Ricky mini camps, I mean, those are something else because of the fact those are like this is like perfect. I enjoy Ricky mini camps because we got beat riders saying, "Oh, so and so threw a pick. Oh, so and so fumbled a snap." Like I think that Sam Darnold ended up fumbling his um, first two snaps at Jets rookie mini camp. All right, so you know what? You know how we talk about pretty much anything or just have some fun with the fourth segment. Maybe we're just going to talk about overreactions as far as Ricky mini camp and just give my thoughts on it all. Who knows? All right, but let me tell you what we're doing for sure. First segment, obviously, if you read the title, all right, Big Ben doesn't really seem to be playing nice with Mason Rudolph. Now, all of a sudden, Big Ben wants to play three to five more years after talking about retirement for what feels like the last four years. So I'm going to give my thoughts on all of that. I mean, it's 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 a little weird, but I do, I guess, get where he's coming from. But again, he did do it to himself. So it's like a whole big situation there. All right. Then we got reports coming out that Stephen Ross, the Dolphins owner, okay, wanted the team to trade back when he found out that they weren't going to be getting any of the top four quarterbacks, meaning Josh Rosen, Mayfield, Allen, or Sam Darnold. Okay. So I want you to give my thoughts on that. I mean, owners wanting to give their input as far as football operations, personnel on all that usually doesn't work out too well. So we're just going to talk about that. Just talk about the Dolphins, I guess, for that second segment. Third segment, we got Mark Ingram getting busted for PED. He's going to be serving a suspension to start the season. All right. I wonder what his statement's going to look like. Probably going to be something like, oh, I didn't knowingly take it or whatever. I would never do that to my fans. You know, just the just the same vanilla statement we always get. Who knows? Let me see real quick. Is it four games? Yeah, first four games of the 2018 season. So we're going to be talking about that. Does it affect the Saints? If it does, how? If it doesn't, then why not? So we'll be doing that. Like I said, for the fourth segment, we're going to be talking about anything else going on in the world of football. And maybe we'll just talk about Ricky Minicamps because, like I said, it is hilarious seeing beat writers um, talk about how so-and-so had a bad practice or whatever. And then you see the fans of that team just completely lose their minds. Like, oh, we got a bust. He's not going to be good. Oh, no. What do we do? So that's how the show's going to go. I'm going to enjoy it. You're going to enjoy it. Everyone's going to enjoy it. All right. So let's get into it. So, I mean, this whole Big Ben and Mason Rudolph thing isn't the first time we've seen this, okay? I even think now when Lamar Jackson got to Baltimore this season for him getting drafted, all right? Yeah, drafted, what, 32nd overall? Yeah. Seems like reports coming out of there. Joe Flacco hasn't really been the most, how do you say, open to a guy like Lamar Jackson, all right? I wonder why. I mean, Big Ben, at least, with Mason Rudolph still has like three more years left before Mason Rudolph touches the field. 
Flacco's out there after this year. Like Flacco, it, it it's hilarious. All right, Flacco is by far one of the worst quarterbacks in the league. But for me, all right, and now it's just a matter of like he's losing his job next season. Lamar Jackson. Okay, that's why they brought in RG three to be the backup. They're gonna start shaping that offense to fit a guy like Lamar Jackson. And of course, if Flacco goes down this season or whatever, he just stinks it up. Rather than throwing Lamar Jackson out there, let him develop some more. So you throw RG3 to run that offense you're trying to build. All right. And with Flacco, I mean, what's the market looking like for him next season when he gets cut? If he gets cut, I guess. I mean, there always is the chance that Flacco comes out and has the season of his life, which I'm willing to bet against. But nonetheless, I mean, is is there going to be a starting quarterback opportunity for him next season? Honestly? I mean, everyone seems to have their quarterbacks, okay? Because if you look at it, and we're going to talk about Big Ben and Mason Rudolph in a bit. But no, if you look at it, I mean, in the NFC East, Dallas has got their quarterback. Eli's going to be the quarterback of the Giants for two more years. Eagles have two quarterbacks they could start forever. Redskins locked up Alex Smith long-term. NFC North, Mitch Trubisky's the guy. Stafford's the guy in Detroit. Rodgers, then you got Cousins. They're all filled up. South, Ryan just got inked up. Cam's the guy for the Panthers going forward. Drew Brees is their quarterback, and I highly doubt they'd go to Joe Flacco. They're going to end up drafting one. Bucks got Jameis, NFC West. Cardinals got Rosen. Rams got Goff. 49ers got Jimmy G. Seahawks got um, Seahawks got Russell Wilson. Over there in the AFC East, Bills drafted Josh Allen. Jets drafted Darnold. I, there's no way in the world the Patriots go after a guy like Joe Flacco. Miami, ah, uh, Tannehill stinks it up this season. Maybe, maybe you see a guy like Flacco end up in Miami, but nonetheless, they'd still draft a quarterback. And that's only if Tannehill stinks this season. And I'm not even sure if he will. I mean, he did play well in his first year under Gaze, but I mean, ended up blowing his knee out that season. So we'll see. Like I said, we're going to be talking about them in the second segment. AFC North, I mean, he's not going to either of any of those teams. AFC South, they all got their quarterback situations fixed up unless Andrew Luck pretty much comes out and is done. And then in the AFC West, you got Keenum, Mahomes. Rivers, Carr. There's literally no spot for Joe Flacco. All right. But nonetheless, this seg- segment isn't about Joe Flacco. Let's talk about Big Ben. Okay. So, like I said, quarterbacks, veteran quarterbacks usually don't tend to get along with the replacement. We saw that with Rodgers and Favre. We saw that with, I guess, maybe you could start to say now Brady and Garoppolo, given that it seems like Brady's the one who got Garoppolo run out of town. All right. And now, like I said, it's Big Ben and Mason Rudolph. Okay, Big Ben's made some comments since they drafted Rudolph, and they haven't been very nice ones. All right. But nonetheless, I mean, he's out here saying that he didn't really like like the pick or anything like that, because how does that help them win now? All right. And big, like his logic saying that isn't wrong. Because if you think about it, I mean, Asa Rudolph isn't helping the Steelers in any way this season. Unless they have a whole new Tommy Maddox situation where, like how Tommy Maddox got hurt, Big Ben comes in and Maddox is never to be seen again. All right. And do the Steelers got Tommy Maddox? Like, like they, they got to have like some ring of honor or something like that. Like, is the number eight retired? It's got to be, you know? I mean, there's no way. There's no way it actually is. But Tommy Maddox, I feel like. And he was only there from like 2001 to 2005. He only had like one decent season. I think it was like 2003 when he went 7-3-1. and one. But nonetheless, I don't know. I don't know why I keep remembering Tommy Maddox as a guy who was like a, like a very good quarterback for the Steelers. I don't know. But either way, I mean, now with Big Ben, it's a matter of... It's the same thing. All right? It's the same exact thing. Big Ben was drafted to be Maddox's replacement. Big Ben... Has talked about before how he thanks Maddox for helping him out so much, but now he's not going to be doing the same for Rudolph. All right, I think there was a comment he made where he said if Rudolph's got any questions, he's just going to point him straight to the playbook. All right, and I mean, remember with Brett Favre when they drafted Aaron Rodgers, the whole thing was, "Oh, you're going to be a mentor to him." Favre straight up said, "Why would I be a mentor? That's not that's not my job," and it's not. All right, I mean, think of it this way. Okay, let's say you're working at a job, you've been there for a while. And they hire the guy that they don't tell you directly, but you know it's the guy who's going to replace you. Okay? They'll tell you, oh, no, you're still our guy. We're just bringing him out here just in case he knows insurance and stuff. But in reality, you know your time is almost up. You're going to help that guy learn how to do your job? 
the guy that's going to replace you? I think more times than not, you won't. Okay, and I'm sure there's people out there saying, oh, yeah, I'd help because I'm a team player. That's cool. All right, but this is a business. All right, the business world, you got to put yourself first. All right, it's just a fact of the matter, and I understand sports is a little bit different. But either way, I mean, it still is a business. So I don't, I'm not mad at Big Ben for for saying that that's not really his job to go out and help him, saying he's going to point him to the playbook, saying that Mason Rudolph doesn't help out, help the team win now because he doesn't. All right, Steelers are still Super Bowl contenders right now. Okay, I understand that they lost to Jacksonville in the divisional round and haven't beat New England in what seems ages, but nonetheless, they're still Super Bowl contenders. All right. But there's two parts to it. There's the part where I agree with Ben Roethlisberger, and there's the part where I disagree. Well, not disagree, but there's a part where it's kind of like he did this to himself. Okay? Ben Roethlisberger, I feel, for like the last four seasons, has just entertained that uh, retirement talk. Last season, when the Jaguars lit him up and picked him off five times, you had Big Ben saying, oh, I don't know if I have it anymore. All right? I don't know if I could do it. And now... All of a sudden, you're going to go out and say, oh, yeah, I want to play three to five more years. Come on now. All right. The Steelers aren't dumb, and I'm not dumb. All right. We all know that the only reason why Big Ben's coming out and say, I want to play three to five more years is because he's no, now I got a guy behind me who could actually take my job. Okay. Big Ben wasn't worried when Landry Jones was back there because Landry Jones is not an NFL quarterback. Okay. Big Ben wasn't mad when Josh Dobbs got drafted. Because of the fact that Josh Dobbs couldn't even cut it at Tennessee. Alright. Mason Rudolph is a good quarterback. That's going to be the guy that takes Big, ben, Big Ben's job in three years when his contract is up over after 2020. Alright. But nonetheless, now all of a sudden he wants to come out and say, yeah, I don't get the move. I mean, it makes no sense there. But I mean, I guess this is how these quarterbacks are now. Alright. And like I said, Big Ben did it to himself there. I don't understand why. Okay? I really don't get it. And I mean, if you're the Steelers, you had to have drafted a quarterback, even though you're Super Bowl contenders now, because of the fact that the matter is, LeBron, or not LeBron, Big Ben does talk about retirement year after year. Okay? that puts That's going to put the whole front office on edge. You're always entertaining the question, how do we know that you're not just going to just say, you know what, I'm done. I don't want to play anymore after the season. All right? So I don't blame the Steelers at all drafted Mason Rudolph. And Big Ben has no one else to be mad at but himself. So we'll see what ends up happening. But like I said, Rudolph's not going to touch the field for another three years because Big Ben's contract isn't up in 2020. So we'll see. As far as them re-upping him, that's not going to happen because he'll be 39 by the time that's over. Maybe 40 depending on what month his birthday is because I think he's currently 36. So we'll see. But either way, that's all I got to say about that. Next up, we're going to be talking, heading over to Miami, talking about the Finns. Stephen Ross seems like he's trying to have some input in these little football decisions. So we're going to give my thoughts on all that. So stay tuned and I'll be right back. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy dash football dash podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Alright, and welcome back to the GSMC Football Podcast. Spent that first segment. Talked about Joe Flacco for a couple of minutes in that segment, but nonetheless, the primary basis of the segment was about Big Ben, Ben Roethlisberger, and him not really 
coming to terms, I guess, with the fact that the Steelers drafted a quarterback with Mason Rudolph in the second or third round. I can't remember exactly which round it was. But yeah, that's Big Ben's replacement, and I'm sure I, and that's understandable why Ben Roethlisberger is frustrated. But like I said, he did it to himself. So the only person he has to get mad at is himself. I mean, year after year, you're going saying, oh, I don't know if I got it. I don't know. I got to see how my body holds up. Maybe I'll retire. I don't know. You don't think that the front off is going to be put on edge by that? I mean, think. Use your head. Okay. But either way, we talked about that for the first segment. Now we're going to be talking about the Miami Dolphins. Okay. Not really a team that is in the headlines too much. Usually it's just for boneheaded football decisions. But I feel like they've kind of, got, kind of gotten away from those boneheaded decisions the last couple of years. So I think they've kind of been trending up a bit with the decisions they've been making. Like some of them make you scratch your head sometimes. But nonetheless, I mean, it's a whole lot less than what it used to be. All right. I think we, everyone can agree on that. But either way, the reason why we're bringing them up is because of the fact that I guess the story coming out, it was first reported by the Boston Globe, I believe it was. And then you had a couple of Miami Herald writers coming out and talking about it. So in the draft or before the draft, we had talk, would Miami be taking a quarterback? Okay. They had meetings with Baker Mayfield. I think they talked to Josh Allen a couple of times, Josh Allen a couple of times. And I think they talked to Josh Rosen a few times. All right. Sam Darnold, I don't think they ever really had a meeting with him because I'm sure they figured he'd be gone by the first three picks, which he was. Okay. But anyway, like I said, the whole buzz around Miami going into the draft was, would they take a quarterback that would be Tannehill's eventual replacement? All right. First pick of the draft is Baker Mayfield. Third pick of the draft is Sam Darnold. Seventh pick is Josh Allen. And then the 10th pick right before Miami's is Josh Rosen. So four out of the top five quarterbacks are taken off the board before Miami gets a chance to decide whether or not they want to take one. Okay. And the report is that once Stephen Ross saw that, he wanted the team to trade down. Obviously, if you watched the first round, you saw that the team refused to do that. Okay? And, I mean, I understand why Ross would do that. And I'm going to speak about that in a few moments. But fact of the matter is, I mean, Miami made the right choice. Okay, they got one of the top defensive players in all the draft. Probably the best secondary prospect in the draft and arguably probably the, the best defensive prospect in the draft. All right. I think for me, it'd be Roquan Smith, who was the best defensive player in the draft. But I think Mika Fitzpatrick is right there. All right. But either way, yeah, I have no problem with Miami taking Mika Fitzpatrick. I mean, I highly doubt they even thought he'd be down there at number 11. I figured he'd be going number four to the Browns. Okay. But they refused that. I mean, the Browns, too, at number four. I mean, they refused Bradley Chubb and Mika Fitzpatrick decided to go with Denzel Ward, and that could work out. But it's a matter of, I mean, yeah, it's some players where, I mean, they could make a bigger impact year one. But, I mean, we have yet to see how Denzel Ward is in the NFL. So, I mean, I can't really knock the pick there. But either way, yeah, like I said, I have no problem with Miami taking Mika Fitzpatrick. If anything, I think that was the best value they could have got at that pick besides a guy like Roquan Smith who went number eight to the Bears, which that is a perfect pick, too, right there. All right, but nonetheless, okay, Stephen Ross, I think, is starting to get a little frustrated because he keeps putting money into this team, renovating the stadium, okay? I think he did that, too, with, like, just money out of his own pocket. And, yeah, he's, he's opened up his checkbook for this team, okay? Every year, they're always signing some type of big free agent, one year it was in, um, one year it was Mike Wallace. The next it's Endowment and Sue, and nothing's really worked out. So I do, I guess, understand maybe Ross being frustrated with it all. Plus, quarterback is still the flashy position in the league. So Tannehill isn't really the flashiest type player, and he's not the greatest quarterback. Maybe that's why Ross wanted the team to trade down. But I will say this: Miami is treading a very, very thin line here, as far as the whole. Now the owner's starting to give his two cents on what the team should do. And that's always a no-no for me. Okay? If you look at the top franchises in the league, it's always the GM does the GM's job, head coach does the head coach's job, and the owner does the owner's job. Okay? Over in New England, it's a little bit different because Bill Belichick is the GM, but nonetheless, Robert Kraft... For the most part, I mean, before this past season, never really got in the middle of things. 
All right, and I say before this season because of the fact that I firmly believe that Robert Kraft is the reason why Jimmy Garoppolo got traded and only did that so Tom Brady would be happy. All right, and now we got all kinds of problems coming out of New England as far as just little things that are starting to come out now, you know, as far as the whole TB12 center and all that. Gronk's been called out. Tom Brady talking about how asked if he's felt appreciated by the Patriots. He says, I plead the fifth. Like, what a dumb answer that was, too. Just say yeah. Just say yeah. But either way, there's that. But as far as Miami goes, like I said, Miami is a franchise where, I mean, other than the 70s, 80s, and 90s have been a dumpster fire. And I think I'm putting it nicely. Okay? Just been a pure dumpster fire from 2004 and on. Okay? I think 2003, they made the playoffs that year. I have to double check. But nonetheless, like I said, 2004, I think that year they went 4-12, and 12, and since then it's been all downhill, except for two outliers in 2000, the 2008 season and the 2016 season when they made the playoffs and got blown out by two AFC North teams. All right. I think that Miami has something good going on with Adam Gase. It seems like now he's starting to get his guys in and all that. And it seems like it's been kind of like a process, like a little three-year process. I think, what, this is his third year going into it. Now he's got all the assistant coaches that he wants, okay? It seems like he's starting to build his team, got the culture that he wants, so obviously it's going to need to work out this year. But you don't need a guy like Steven Ross just giving his mind, giving his peace of mind on what the Dolphins should do, all right? No owner should do that. The only exception to the rule is Jerry Jones because of the fact of the matter is he was smart enough to just make himself the GM, all right? Jerry Jones, for the most part, I think has done a decent job. I mean... From the 2000s on, 2000s on, hasn't really, but nonetheless, I mean, is that his fault or is that Tony Romo's fault? Might be Jerry's, might be Tony's, might be both, okay? But as far as Miami goes, I mean, it seems like we're getting to the point where Adam Gase has to do something this year, okay? And I'm not saying he's got to go out and make the playoffs, but I feel like anything below an 8-8 eight and eight finish is a means for him getting fired, possibly, okay? Especially given the fact that he didn't take one quarterback in the draft. Okay, he is also walking a very tight rope here. He has literally put his job security in Ryan Tannehill's hands. Because do you know who the other quarterbacks on that team are? All right, after Tannehill, it's David Fales. All right, Bryce Petty and Brock Osweiler. And... Honestly, I think David Fales is probably the best quarterback out of those three that I named. Okay, but fact of the matter is he's not going to be getting any playing time. It'll probably be Brock Brock Osweiler as the backup. And Brock Osweiler, the person might be a good guy, but Brock Osweiler, the quarterback, isn't great. Okay, Tannehill goes down once this season. Injured, whatever, their season's over. It's over. Okay. That's it. They have no backup plan. All right. So Adam Gase better be right as far as Tannehill being the guy. All right. Because he's not getting another chance after this year if Tannehill stinks it up. And I don't think Tannehill's really ever been like a bad quarterback. Okay. Let me check his stats out. But like he's always been like he hasn't been bad. But he hasn't been good. He's been like the epitome of average, I guess. Okay? Like good enough to keep his job, but not good enough to amount to anything else, I guess. All right, because let's see. His rookie year started 16 games. He went 7-9. and nine. All right, had 12 touchdowns, 13 picks. Those are some rookie numbers right there. 2003, they go 8-8. Eight and eight, Throws for nearly 4,000 yards. Has 24 touchdowns, 17 interceptions. 2014, they go 8-8 eight and eight again. Okay. Throws, complete 66% of his passes. Throws for 4,000 yards, 27 touchdowns, 12 picks. I mean, the record's not great, but the numbers look good. 2015, 6-10. All right. 61% of his passes completed. Throws for over 4,200 yards, 24 touchdowns, 12 picks. And then in 2016, it seemed like he was having a career year. It seemed like he was playing the best that... He has so far. I mean, he was 8-5 and five before he tore his knee. 67% completion percentage, which was his best. Was at 3,000 yards. Had 19 touchdowns, 12 interceptions with three games left to spare. 
All right. And his QB rate QB rating was the best that it's ever been there. All right. So I mean, he hasn't been great, he hasn't been bad, he's been average. Now it's just a matter of how much does Adam Gase trust him? And obviously it's got to be a lot cuz he's that it's his, it's his job or nothing after this year. Okay. So we'll see what Miami's got going on, but I do like the moves they've made this offseason. Okay, I love the Minka Fitzpatrick pick. I think, like I said, that's the most value you could get out of number 11 pick. Okay, I like the tight end they got out of Penn State. I got to figure out how to pronounce this dude's last name. It's Mike Geski. I'm going to just say it's Geski. Geski or is it Geski? I'm going to say Geski. All right, tight end out of Penn State. Should be a day one starter. Jerome Baker could be a starter. Outside linebacker out of Ohio State for Miami. All right, he's already a whole lot faster than Kiko Alonzo is. Plus, I think either way, you still need another one on the opposite side of Kiko. You're going to have Raekwon McGillan playing the middle linebacker spot. All right. Durham Smith, tight end out of Notre Dame. Going to be the new blocking tight end for Miami. Kalen Balage, running back at Arizona State, I think could be a nice little option for Miami this season. I mean, dude tore it up with Arizona State this season, so we'll see. But like I said, I do like what Adam Gase has done this season. Offseason, now it's just a matter of making it all work. And if it doesn't, then it's over. Okay, so he better hope Brian Tannehill plays well this season or else he's going to have no job. Because I already know um, Stephen Ross is growing very tiresome of this team not really getting it done. All right, eight and eight seasons, seven and nine seasons aren't going to get it done here. Needs to start at least going nine and seven and make the playoffs. So we'll see what they do this season. AFC is looking kind of weak. I mean, the AFC South is the best division in the AFC. AFC West got a bunch of teams where you're not really sure about. I mean, obviously in the East, you got the Patriots who are going to win that division. And then the AFC North, I mean... You get the Steelers, but after that, everyone's pretty much a toss-up. So we'll see. So if any, if it was every year for the Dolphins to do something, it'd be this year as far as making the playoffs. All right. So we're going to wrap it up here. Next up, we're going to be talking Saints. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. GSMCpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Football Podcast. So far today, we've talked Big Ben not being happy about Mason Rudolph being drafted. I mean, it makes sense, but he did it to himself, buddy. All right, you did this to yourself. Shouldn't have been talking about retirement year after year for the last four years. All right, a little bit ridiculous there. All right, maybe he just loves the attention. Who knows? Did you guys know that Big Ben has me blocked? Ben Roethlisberger has me blocked on Twitter. I have no clue. Actually, I do have a clue. I think he blocks a lot of the media guys out there, but I'm just some kid who goes to college. So why would he block me? I don't know. But either way, yeah, so that's notable. I'm blocked by Ben Roethlisberger on Twitter. Never tweeted at him either. Like, never even, like, favorited a tweet or anything like that. But nonetheless, I'm blocked. All right. And we talked about that. We talked about Miami in the second segment. And then this third segment, we got the Saints to talk about. Not just the Saints, I guess, as a whole team, but more so... Mark Ingram. Okay. So, this past season, we saw the Saints, all right, not like the other Saints teams we've come to know. Not like the other Saints teams where they have absolutely no defense. Receivers are kind of bad. Running back situation isn't great. But hey, we got Drew Brees, so we have any chance in the world to win. That's kind of been the New Orleans Saints that I've known. Okay, last season's team, completely different from that. Okay. Had a very good defense. 
Had very good receivers. Mike Thomas for me, top three receiver. Dare I say it, I'd take Antonio Brown over him. And I guess I'm, yeah, I'll take Antonio Brown and I'll take, I gotta be careful because you guys are gonna jump on me for this. I'll just make him fourth. I'll take Brown, Hopkins, and no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going against this. I'm not, I'm only taking Brown and Hopkins over Thomas. I would take Thomas over Julio. There, there's my hot take of the week. All right, but nonetheless, yeah, you got great receivers. Okay. And your running backs, like I said, last good running back the Saints had before last season. Reggie Bush, and I don't even think he was that great with the Saints. I don't even think he ever put up a thousand yard season with the Saints. And Reggie Bush, I mean, we all expected him to be so much better coming out of USC when he came into the league, right? I mean, he had to be. Let's see, his first year with the Saints, he plays 16 games, only starts 8 of them, rushes for 565 yards, had 6 touchdowns. I mean, he did have 88 receptions, 742 yards there. All right. Next season, he only plays 12 games, starts 10 of them, has 581 rushing yards, four touchdowns. All right, 417 receiving yards. 2008, let's see, 404 yards. I mean, he just dealt with injuries, it seems, during his time with the Saints. All right. So, yeah, I mean, it never really even worked out there. He wasn't even the greatest running back for that team. Okay. But nonetheless, all right. They got Kamara and Ingram back there. Two-headed monster. They couldn't be stopped at all. Okay. Mark Ingram still did, um, kept his starting job. And Kamara was more so the third down, kind of wild card type back. This year, it was looking like it was going to be the same. Ingram's entering a contract year. Given the year he had this past season, I mean, if he replicated that again, he'd get paid, whether it'd be by the Saints or a different team. Who knows? But either way, he'd be getting paid. Now it's a matter of he's only got 12 games to show what he could do, and he better hope that Alvin Kamara does not steal his starting job when he gets back. Okay. Because of the fact is he's suspended for the first four games because of a PED positive test. PED stands for performance enhancing drugs. All right. And like I said, I mean, we're probably going to get the same cookie cut letter of my fans know I would never do something like this. I would never try to uh, gain an advantage on the field, okay? I've always played the right way. But I should have been smarter and I should have read the label. I'm sure his, whatever statement he puts out, if he does, is going to have something like that. Okay? Like, it's got you, right? I mean, that's just, that's, that, that would be my PED letter if I, if I had to, if I uh, had my choice, I'd make it one. All right? But granted, I don't play professional sports. And, I mean, there's that. All right. But like I said, I mean, going into the season, it's a contract year. You can't be slipping up like this. All right. You can't at all, especially given that you got the rookie of the year right behind you. You got to be smarter, right? And you know what? Like, now that I think about it, maybe he just didn't know. Because if he did know he was what he was doing, then he is not the smartest person. Okay. I mean, you'd have to have known you gotten caught. You'd get caught. And I don't understand why these players choose to take these performance enhancing substances when they know they're going to get caught. All right. I mean, isn't that how it worked? How it works? So now you're sitting out the first four games. And Kamara, I mean, why wouldn't he take over that starting spot? All right, he was that good last season. Could have been the starting, um, the starting running back if they just wanted to make it, make him it next uh, last season. So now, if you're Mark Ingram, man, I mean, like I said, I don't think Sean Payton's the kind of guy who does favors or holds down the spots for people. All right, seems like he's more so the next man up type of mentality. Kamara's the next man up, and I understand that they're teammates and all that. Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara. But I know as soon as Kamara saw that notification, I'm sorry, he's like, oh, that stinks. But in the back of his mind, he's going, you know what? It's time for me to step up and it is time for me to take over. Okay. And I mean, I'm sure that's what's going to happen. All right. But does 
Mark Ingram getting suspended for the first four games of the season affect the Saints in any way? I don't really think so. Okay. I think that it doesn't make a difference as far as wins and losses go. Might sound a little harsh, but I think it's the truth. All right, Kamara is that good. And it's just a matter of, I mean, it's only four games. First four games of the season. Let me see. They got the Bucks. They got the uh, the Bucks, the Browns, the Falcons, and the Giants. A couple of tough, I don't know. what. Uh, it's too early to pick wins and losses. Okay. Like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go out and say, oh, yeah, they'll beat the Bucks, they'll beat the Browns and all that because of the fact that it matters. The Browns could be a very good team this season, and it's just everyone is sleeping on it. Okay. The Bucks could be very much better than they were last season now that they have an actual decent bye week. Okay. And then you get the Falcons, who have been a pretty actually a great team in the NFC South last few years. Went to the Super Bowl two years ago. And then you get the Giants, where, I mean, Pat Sherman's the guy. They could be a good team. So I'm not going to go on pig wins and losses here. But either way, like I said, Kamara's good enough to where I think the offense doesn't really lose a step. Okay. And I'm not saying that Mark Ingram doesn't bring a lot to the table here. But it's just a matter of, I mean, it's like with Des Bryant and the Cowboys. Des Bryant's still a good receiver. Okay, but the Cowboys cutting him does not affect their wins or losses for this season at all, I feel. All right. I don't think they're any worse off. I don't think they're any better off. All right, I think that's fair to say. So, yeah, with Ingram, I mean, it's just a matter of bad choice here. I mean, it doesn't make sense. I don't understand how you can make a mistake like this. Okay. So it's going to be very interesting. I mean, you could have a guy like Trey Edmonds, too, who steps up. And obviously, when Ingram gets back, he's going to get some touches. Like, it's not like Ingram coming back is going to be straight to the bench. Like, no. Okay, but if you're the Saints and you see that Kamara's playing well in the starting role and Trey Edmonds is doing well to take over that backup spot and they also drafted a guy in the sixth round, Boston Scott. Okay, if any of those guys seem like they can handle the backup role, Ingram won't be back with the Saints after this season. Okay. But there will be a market for Mark Ingram, no doubt. Mark Ingram's no scrub by any means. He's a very decent back. So, I mean, it's just a matter of this affects him only, I guess, in a way where, how do you say, this only affects him as far as being back with the Saints after this season. Okay, and I don't see them, honestly, bringing back Mark Ingram. I'm going to go out and say, go out on a limb and say that he ends up on a different team because of the fact is, I mean, someone's going to pay Mark Ingram a lot of money and you already got, got a guy in Kamara who, if he performs this season, will be 10 times cheaper. Okay, and I just threw that number out there, but he will be cheaper. And, of course, now that we know that the NFL is a business, why would you bring back Mark Ingram when you got already a top running back? All right. So it'll be interesting to see, but like I said, very poor choice for Mark Ingram here. I mean, like I said, we're probably going to get the same vanilla statement we always get from these players. I mean... I got to double check to see if he's or if he's released it yet. If he did, I'll read it for the next segment to see how much of it I got right. But nonetheless, like I said, I mean, I don't think it really affects wins and losses for the Saints. I still think that they are the top team in that NFC South right now. All right, I mean, they still have a great offense. You got Breeze, Kamara, Thomas, solid offensive line. I feel and a very good defense. I mean, if I'm the Saints, I'm not really sweating this. Okay, the only person who should be worried is Mark Ingram. So we'll see what ends up happening. But anyway, we're going to wrap it up here. And like I said, for the next segment, we're going to be talking about anything else going on in the world of football. So stay tuned, and I'll be right back. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast.
All right, and welcome back to the GSMC Football Podcast. We spent that first segment today talking about Big Ben, his little comments about Mason Rudolph. I mean, they're not the best, but it makes sense, I guess. And from the Pittsburgh front office, I feel like I got to be getting a little bit tired of Big Ben, right? Then Roethlisberger. I mean, the dude talks about retirement like it's nobody's business. Every year. All right. I mean, he had to have known that they were going to be taking a quarterback at one point in time. I mean, it makes no sense to me why he wouldn't realize that. But nonetheless, who knows? Okay. Second segment, we talked about the Miami Dolphins. Talked about that story of Stephen Ross wanting Miami to trade back since they couldn't get any of the top four quarterbacks that were taken. All right. That's not usually something you want to hear if you're a fan of the team or if you even work for the team because of the fact that once the um, owner starts getting in the way of things, it never seems to go well. I mean, isn't that how Harbaugh got fired? Which is still ridiculous. I mean, they are that 49ers franchise is extremely lucky that they found John Lynch and ended up getting Kyle Shannon as their head coach because they would have been bad for so long. All right, getting rid of Harbaugh was the dumbest move I've ever seen in my life. Literally, like I don't understand it at all. Okay, and I can't stand owners who, I get that you pay the bills and all that, but you know nothing about football. Okay, absolutely nothing. Stay in your lane. All right, and just write the checks. That's maybe something Jim Mercer could do, but he refuses. Jerry Jones is probably the only owner in out of all the 32 that has a decent football mind meaning he knows the ins and outs players and all that okay and even then so he's still got steven jones and all that all those guys down there pretty much just watching and making sure that he's not doing anything wrong jerry jones knows how to do it right all right steven ross jim mercy anyone else besides jerry jones take a seat sign the check and watch the games okay You don't know much about football, and that's fine. But do not ruin your team. All right? So we talked about that. Third segment, we talked about Mark Ingram being suspended for for the first four games of the 2018 season because of a PED violation. Not a smart move on his part. And much most um, because of the fact that it's a contract year for him. And also because of the fact that Alvin Kamara is right there. All right? Kamara is going to take over that starting spot, no doubt. Okay, Mark Ingram won't be back with the Saints after the season. I'm willing to go ahead and say that that's going to be, I'm going to be right on that one. If I'm wrong, I'll be surprised. I mean, why would you bring back Mark Ingram where you're going to pay him a lot of money rather where you could pay a guy like Kamara a rookie contract salary type thing, all right, that he's already got now. So we'll see what ends up going on. I don't think it really affects the Saints offense or anything like that. I still think they're a very good offense, and I think Kamara can go out and do the full-time running back job for four games. So we'll see there. Like I said, in the first segment, we talked a bit about rookie minicamps. So we got those going on right now. Okay? And I'm going to tell you guys all something. Some of you may already know. Some of you may not. But rookie minicamps don't mean a thing. Okay? If anything, this is more so just a chance to get the rookies familiar with the facilities they're going to be working in and all that. Get them a chance to look at the playbook and all that. All right. I saw that Sam Darnold on his first rookie minicamp practice snap. Fumbled the snap. All right. You want to, and he fumbled a, another snap later on that day. You want to know how much that means? It means absolutely nothing at all. Okay. Zero. And I love these beat writers too because they know that all this means nothing. It's all just a matter of familiarity and all that. But they're still going to put it out there because people like us, we're going to freak out. Okay. Oh, my quarterback that our team just drafted this year isn't looking so hot in Ricky Minicamp. How's he going to do against all these other veterans? All right? Like, it's hilarious. I enjoy watching it. I enjoy seeing it. All right? Could just be me watching everything burn down, but nonetheless. All right? It's still funny to watch. All right? It's funny to watch the fans freak out over some Ricky Minicamp stuff. Miami, actually, they do it right. The Dolphins. Okay? For their rookie media camp, they don't even touch the field, really. No, Nothing's going on. No practices. It's more so just learn the playbook and get familiar. All right? You're just there to learn. That's how I think these teams should do it. All right? Just teach the young guys for that weekend. 
Why are you going to go have them out there just pretty much practicing already when they're going to be doing that for training camp? I'm sure some of these guys need it, but nonetheless, I mean, if you got the guys you want, I'm sure maybe you expect them to be there by training camp, right? Yeah. So that's that. those are just my thoughts on it. I mean, I thought that when Adam Gase came to Miami and said that he was going to be doing that, I thought it was genius. All right? Instead of having these rookies pretty much just trying to multitask, have them learn one thing. All right? And what better thing than the playbook? Pretty much how the team works and all that. So, yeah, like I said, I mean, if your quarterback's out here, like Baker Mayfield, I heard, hadn't looked so hot first couple of days of rookie minicamp, it doesn't matter. Okay? It doesn't matter one bit. There's no problem. It'll be just fine. Okay? If he's truly a bust, you'll know once the season comes. Okay? So I got my thoughts on that. Let's see what else is going on in the world of football. C.J. Anderson got signed. One-year deal with the Carolina Panthers. All right. C.J. Anderson, I mean, he's been pretty good in his career so far, I feel, at least. All right. Hasn't been like a top 10 running back or anything like that. I think I feel pretty comfortable saying that. I don't know. Maybe he has been. Maybe we'll have to go back and look. Okay. Actually, what are the top 10 running backs right now for me? All right. Let's see, over in the East, I'm going to go just 10 running backs I take over C.J. Anderson. I'll take Ezekiel Elliott. Okay, that's the only running back I'll take in the NFC East over him. NFC North. Uh, Jordan Howard. NFC South. Devontae Freeman. I'll take Kamara and Ingram over him already. That's 35 running backs. NFC West. Gurley. David Johnson. That's seven running backs. AFC East. LaShawn McCoy, that's eight. AFC North. Le'Veon, that's nine. And let's see. AFC South. Fournette, that's ten. Okay, let's see. Anyone else? Um, Texans, no, I'll take... I take, I think... I'll take Lamar Miller over him. That's, what, 11. AFC West. Melvin Gordon, that's 12. Kareem Hunt, that's 13. So there's about 13 better running backs than C.J. Anderson. But looking back at C.J. Anderson's career, I mean, let's see what he's done so far. Rick Year was in 2013, didn't really play much, so I'm not even going to go over that. 2014, he made the Pro Bowl. He played 15 games, started seven of them, ran for, over, or ran for 849 yards, had eight rushing touchdowns, also had 324 yards receiving, 34 receptions, and two touchdowns. The next year, he plays 15 games again, only starts six of them. All right, I think that's when they had McGahee, wasn't it? I think it is. I have to double check, but nonetheless, yeah, 2015, 15 games played, six starts, 720 yards, five touchdowns. Let's see, 30, 25 receptions, 183 yards, no touchdowns, and his receiving numbers seem to go down as his career progresses. So in 2016, he goes for 437 yards, only plays seven games there. I think he was hurt in 2016, only four touchdowns, and then this past season was his first thousand yard. Um, thousand yard season, but I feel like no one really even thought much of this season for him. I mean, he rushed for over a thousand yards, only had three touchdowns there. So I mean, that's not great. I mean, C.J. Anderson, yeah, he's about a fifteenth best running back around there in that little area. I think that's fair to say. All right, but now he's playing for the Panthers, and he's probably going to be the fill-in for Jonathan Stewart now that he's gone. Okay, and I have no problem with it. I mean, obviously. Christian McCaffrey is going to be more so the Kamara type back where, yeah, he could run the ball, but nonetheless, you're going to be using him in the passing game. C.J. Anderson actually gives you that opportunity to have actually a full, a primary running back rather than a guy who pretty much does everything, if you get what I'm saying here. Like a guy who, yeah, you got McCaffrey, but you got a guy who can run in between the tackles and C.J. Anderson. All right, McCaffrey isn't really a running back who does that too much. All right, and I like what the Panthers have done this offseason, Okay. DJ Moore was the right pick at number one in the first round. Well, not at number one. It was the 23rd pick, but nonetheless, you get what I'm saying. Okay, they've needed a running or a wide receiver, so you put Moore and Funches out there. I mean, Cam should be fine. All right? The only reason, like, Cam Newton's always had accuracy issues, I feel. But nonetheless, I mean, giving him talent out there is going to help it. Okay? Then you got McCaffrey, who's pretty much uh, I can do everything type of running back. Like I said, Anderson's that guy who could get in between the tackles. And then I feel like they did well this draft to fix up the secondary a bit, okay? I mean, it's just a matter of how well these guys are going to turn out. 
But nonetheless, you're seeing that they're taking steps in order to fix up that secondary, which I think is what killed them in the playoffs against the Saints. All right, and looking at it, I mean, yeah, Cam Newton's never really been too much of an accurate quarterback. I think his best season as far as accuracy was 2013, where he completed nearly 62% of his passes. I mean, other than that, after that season, he, in 2014, he completed nearly 59. 2015, he completed nearly 60. 2016, he completed nearly 53% of them. And then 2017, he completed 59%. So, yeah, he's never really been too much of an accurate quarterback, but I mean, he's going to get the ball there. His best year was in 2015. I think that's the year that went to the Super Bowl, and that was a monster year for Cam Newton, too. Went 15-1, 35 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. How many yards did he run for? I don't even got his rushing yards number. I have to double-check those. Let's see. His rushing numbers in 2015 ran for 636 yards, 10 touchdowns. Dude was a beast. All right, but nonetheless, yeah, I do like the move for the Panthers bringing in C.J. Anderson. I think it's a, it's a, it's a good fit for both parties. So, actually, we're going to wrap it up here. Like I said, today we talked Big Ben. We've talked Miami Dolphins, Saints, talked Panthers, and we talked Ricky, uh, Ricky Minicamp. So, I think it was a fun show. I enjoyed it. But nonetheless, we'll be back on Thursday. So, thanks for listening to the GSMC Football Podcast. As always, I am your host, Jesse Tapia. Like I said, we'll see you on Thursday. So, I'll talk to you later. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program